I want to quickly talk to you. Next couple of minutes, it's not going to be long. I just want to talk to you about mountain moving faith. Mountain moving faith. Last week, we, we, we spoke about you know, following feelings, following faith. I, I want to continue just, just on that, that faith thing. I just felt we needed to do that, spend just a, a little bit of time there. Uh, I think we all face mountains in our lives at times. There are there times where we go through, through a stage where it's kind of okay, and then there are times where we face some mountains. And the mountain in your life may be finance that isn't coming in in your business, and people owe you finance and, and it's not coming in. It may be a lack of business, maybe a health issue, maybe an issue with a child, child that's rebellious and going off track and, and battling and, and, and so on. And, and so you're facing this thing. You've been praying about it, bringing it before God. God, please help me. God, I need that money. Please uh, cause them to release that money. And it's good for you and me to pray. It's good for us to bring it before the Lord. And sometimes we pray and we trust the Lord and nothing happens. And that's where I think we need to take the next step. And that's what I want to share with you this morning, is where we start speaking over that mountain. Listen to what Jesus said here in Mark chapter 11. He says, I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. So Jesus gives us two conditions here. He says, uh, uh, the two conditions are saying and believing. If anyone says and believes, he says, something is going to happen. Now, maybe you've prayed about that issue, but it's time that you start speaking over that issue. It may be a health thing. It's time that you come and you speak to that sickness in your body, and you say to that sickness, sickness... You've got no more right in this body. You cannot stay in this body. And I'm not asking you to leave, and I'm not saying, please do me a favor. I'm telling you to get out in Jesus' name. What are you doing? You're simply using the power and the authority that God has given you. I want to remind you, when you go and have a look at Jesus' life in the New Testament, you'll see that Jesus prayed now and again. For people, but most of the time he just addressed it. He just simply took authority of that thing. He spoke to that thing. And that same authority, believe it or not, has been given to you and me. Jesus said in Matthew 28, He says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. He sends us out with authority. And so you and I have got to understand as children of God. We have power and authority. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 14, he says, you know what? You guys are going to do the stuff that I've been doing. And even greater things than these. Look at it on the screen. It says, anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing. He will do even greater things than these. Remember last week I shared with you just about Jesus speaking to the, the fig tree. He didn't kick the fig tree. Didn't spit on the fig tree. He spoke to it. And he simply said to the fig tree, he said, he said nobody will ever eat from you again. He exercised his, his authority. And so sometimes you and I just need to do the same. There's stuff happening in your life and you need to look at that sickness and say, sickness, you've got to go. Death, there's no more place for you in my life. Uh, 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 rebellion and backstabbing. You can't hang around in my family anymore, in my firm anymore. You, you've got to get out here. And so when you and I start doing that, when we start, start exercising our authority, guess what happens? The host of darkness sit up and, and they, they take note. And by the way, they, they don't really see you. <laughs> they see the one standing behind you doing this. <laughs> you better listen to him. You better listen to her. I know she's small, but she's, she's got power behind her. And so nothing can stand against your God, against my God. And we've got to realize what we have. You know, I've learned if you and I won't speak to our mountains, the enemy will speak to us about our mountain. And he will say things like, you're not going to get that money in. 
those people owing you all that money. Everybody is battling at the moment in business. You better just get used to it. You better just accept it. That sickness that you're going through, why would God heal you? So-and-so died of a sickness, of a similar thing. Why is it going to be that? You better just accept it. You better just get used to it. So what is the enemy doing? Is, is he going to build your faith? And encourage you to rise up in, in, in confidence and take up your authority? I don't think so. <laughs> He's going to do exactly the opposite. And he'll try and discourage us and try and get us to settle for, for, for uh, a defeat and mediocrity and sickness and lack and all of that stuff. Just, just that's the way life is. I'm sorry. For, just settle for that. So the decision you and I have got to make is, are we going to follow our feelings? Are we going to follow faith? Are we going to follow the lies of the enemy? Or rise up in boldness and confidence, and the authority that God has put on the inside, and, 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 and start taking authority over those things? And maybe you're saying, well, Leonard, why should I even pray? You know, um, should, why is it, impor or, or, why is it important to, to, to speak? Shouldn't I just pray? You see, what I found is very often when people pray, they just they, they come before the Lord, and it's almost like, you know, Lord, please, you've got to do this thing for me, please, Lord. You know, my child, please, Lord. When you and I start taking authority, it's almost like you rise up. You, you, you shift gears. Your faith moves into another gear. And you start speaking. Now, now, now you're not begging and pleading. You see, for too many people... They, they begging and pleading. There's a big difference between begging and pleading and taking authority. And I think, I think that's what God is waiting for, is for His children not, not to rise up with a, with a cockiness and an arrogance, but just a quiet confidence where we say, I'm, I'm not going to take this nonsense in my life anymore or in my family or in my firm Satan, you've got to get your hands off of this in Jesus' name. I'm sick and tired of your nonsense. You start taking authority over that thing. Let me quickly tell you a story, true story. One of the ladies in the church saw at the local shopping center, saw a car that, they, that you could win if you go and put your, your, your tool slip in, in, in the car. This was some time ago. It wasn't the car that they've got there right now. They've always got a car there, you know. So in any case, so listen to the story. So she goes, and she walks in, and she sees this lot, and she needs a car. They really need a car at the moment. She doesn't have a vehicle. And so she goes, and she comes out, puts her slip in and everything. And so this is, this is her car. She says to herself, I'm going to win this car. She goes back home, and she announces to her husband, they've got my car there at the shopping center, and I'm, I'm going to win that car. And so being the very practical Logical husband that he is, he decides to not to correct her. <laughs> and so he just, he just, yes, yes, honey, yes, yes, that's fine, yeah, that, that's great. And so this carries on for weeks. And so she, if she just needs a drop of milk, she buys milk, she drops in her thing there. She needs a bread. Oh, she's got to go back and go and put in another slip. And so she's popping and slips into that, into that box. And, and she's coming home and she's telling her husband about her car. Look, by now he's got the number for the counseling center already. He, he knows this, this woman needs help. So on the day of the draw, she remembers that they have an appointment with friends she can't be there. And the rules stipulate that you've got to be there. If you're not there, you can't win the car. And so she's in trouble. Or should I rather say her husband's in trouble? Because he's going to go alone. And so she goes to the shopping center. He goes to visit the friends. She gets there to the shopping center. They pull a couple of names out the box. And, uh, and the people aren't present, so they discard them. Pull a couple more names out the box. Believe it or not, her name is there. And so they have three finalists. She's amongst the three finalists. And so they hand them each a key, those three people. And they ask the first lady to step forward and, and to try her key. And so she goes forward, puts her key in, and it won't open. 
So they invite the next gentleman to come forward and to try his key. And so he goes, and, and, he's, and he's won't open the door either. And, and by now, he's trying to force it. This key's got to open this door. And, and she's looking at it. She's standing with her key. She's ready to go. And she's like, don't mess up my locks. You know, this guy's messing up my locks. <laughs> and so eventually, eventually, they invite her forward. And she puts her key in. And it opens the door, and she wins the car. And, and she brings the car here to church just to show it off. Look what God has done for me. Please, will you pray over this car? Can we thank the Lord together? And I sat in her car and everything. Now listen, listen, what am I saying to you? Because now we've got to get this clear. <laughs> I can see the confusion. <laughs> am I saying that we can just go around naming and claiming it? No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying, there's power in what we speak and what we believe. Jesus said there's power in speaking belief. And I, and I know, please hear my heart now. I know there are people who go and teach these extremes of, of naming it and claiming it. And, and most of us, we've heard it at some stage. And we switch off to the truth. We throw out the baby with the bathwater <laughs> because of some extreme. So recognize the extreme. But I'm asking you, please recognize the truth as well. Jesus says, I want to read it to you again. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes. And so what Jesus is simply saying to us, realize the authority that you have. Realize the power that you have when you start speaking life. And take up your authority. Exercise your authority. You see, I think God has placed each one of us where we need to be. We're there for a reason. You, you, it's not by chance that you're working in that company, working in, in, in that specific firm. It's not by chance you're running that department. It's not by chance that you're teaching in that specific school. There's some problems and some challenges right there in those departments that you need to start taking authority over. You need to start making a difference right in that situation. God's counting on you. He hasn't put me there. He's put you there, and you can make a difference. You can be salt and light. You can be the Joseph in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's house was blessed because, because Potiphar was so great. No, because Joseph was there. Joseph served God. And I'm telling you, there's Josephs and Josephines sitting here, all right? And God wants to use us wherever we are. And so when God gives you power and authority, just hear this. It's never only for yourself. It's not for you to look good. It's not for you to go and show off. And it's so that he can look good. So that God can take the glory. And so when, when, when God blesses us, God's blessing, when God's blessing comes to you, uh, uh, his, his blessing is always to us and through us. Not to us and for us. You see, this is where a lot of people make the mistake. Oh, look what God's done for me. Just give me more. Just, and it's just selfish, and it's all about me. Yes, God blesses us for us. But it's not only to us and for us. It's to us and through us. So that healing can flow through you. So that finance can flow through you. So that encouragement can flow through you. God wants you and me to make a difference to the people around about us. Now, maybe you say, Leonard, you have no idea the industry that I'm involved in and how impossible the situation is at the moment. <laughs> That's great. Because those are the situations that God loves. It's almost the easy ones you sorted out. Give me, give me the impossible one. Because when God gets involved, everybody knows it's a miracle. When God brings a breakthrough, there's no, no way that you and I can take the glory. There's no doubt in our minds who did it. We know it's got to be God. And so don't let the enemy ever say to you, Oh, you know, this, this is too big. This is, those are the ones God loves. 
Now, maybe you've prayed over that situation. You've quoted scripture. You've, you've, uh, you've believed. You've stood on the word. Now start speaking. I'll make a big show of it. Just between you and God, you just, you stand. You rise up in faith. Speak life. Speak life. Listen to what the Bible says. Proverbs 18. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And so what the Bible is saying is you're going to have what you speak. You're going to have what you speak. And so if you've been going around speaking death, don't be surprised when you have death in that situation. You know, you're going around and saying, I'll never get out of debt. I'll, I'll never get a decent job. I'll never get that contract. Or for the single people, there aren't any good guys around. Or there aren't any good girls around. Don't be surprised if there aren't any for you. <laughs> because you've been speaking that over your life. And so maybe you need to repent and come and say, God, I need to repent. God, I've been so foolish. I've been, I've been using this tool that you've given me to speak death. Please forgive me. Please help me from now on to speak life and to speak only life. And listen, things may not change immediately. I'm telling you. It may not change immediately. You start speaking life. Just remember, you've been speaking death for 10 years. All right, so a lot of that, a lot of that seed is still busy coming up. <laughs> but somewhere, you've got to make a change. Somewhere, you've got to start speaking life. And the moment you start doing that, what are you doing? You're releasing that in the spiritual realm. Remember, we're not only physical beings. We're physical beings having a spiritual experience on this earth. And so you start speaking life like that. That's what you're releasing into the, into the spiritual realm. And that's what God needs to go to work on, on our behalf. Let me just quickly remind you. Some of you, you know the story. Some of you, you don't. So let me quickly share with you. Way back in probably about 2008, remember when we were going through the financial crisis, uh, so at the same time, while we were going through that financial crisis, we heard that, that the council, the municipality, were at some stage going to widen Dan Road. And so that means that they'll take a, a whole piece of our land, a 17-meter piece of our land, off right from the top, right from the bottom to, to widen the road. And on top of that, they'll close both our entrances. If that had to happen, we're going to be in serious trouble. And so they just came to share with us, to say to us, listen, just be aware. They showed us the plans, everything. It's been passed. Only reason they haven't done it is because they haven't had the finance. And so they can't tell us when it's going to happen. But they're basically saying it's going to happen at, at some stage. And so we can either sit on our hands and do nothing. Or we can look at it and say, well, maybe we need to get another piece of land. You see, the school has been growing and doing so well. We've got almost 900 students in the school. It's been rated one of the best independent schools in Gauteng. And so the school is really doing well. But now, you know what's busy happening? It's with the school growing and the church growing, it's like having two teenagers in one room. Sometimes they love one another, and other times they want to kill one another. And so that's what's been happening. We need bigger land. And so back in 2008, I said, my father was still alive. And I said to him, I said, Dad, I think we need land. And this is the best time to buy land and during a financial crisis because prices had plummeted. And we looked at a, at a few different pieces of land. And then we found this one piece of land big enough. It's about three, four times what we have now. This would probably work to, to down the line, relocate school and church and so on. And so it's just forward planning. And so we started negotiating with the sellers. We eventually put in a, a, an offer on the land. They came back to us and said, look, your offer's a little bit low. We probably need double. 
And, and, and they weren't unrealistic. Double would have been sort of at that stage fair market value. We just couldn't afford it. And so that's why we offered what, what we could. And, and we're talking about millions here. And so uh, we started praying. We bring it before the Lord. We say, Lord, we haven't asked to move the church. We don't want to move the church. But God, we, we, we're growing. You know, and, and this is what's happening. School, church, everything. God, you know, if, if you want us to relocate, because there was a time in my life where I actually said, we will not move. I don't feel like going through a building campaign and all of that stuff. And God spoke to me, and God just said to me, if you want to stay here for the rest of your life, you knock yourself out. But I've got more. Okay, Lord. And so, uh, really, that's it. And so, we started praying, really trusting the Lord. And, and now, I'm, I'm giving you the shortened version. This took months. Months. I would get on my bicycle and go and cycle around the, the, the land. And I would speak over that land, exactly what I'm telling you to do. And I would say, we have favor over this land. God, I don't know if this is our land, but if it is, we're going to have favor. And the sellers are going are gonna to treat this thing favorably, not as a normal business deal. We're going to have favor. And so I just kept on speaking that out. They eventually, long story short, they came back to us. They said, you know, you've offered that. We want to double. You can have it for half you offered. Let's give God a hand. Come on. <clears throat> what am I saying? There's power in your words. There's power. Are you going to speak life and favor? And blessing and breakthrough over your family and over your, over your business and over your health? Or are you going to speak death? And you've got to decide. Which one is it going to be? God has given us authority. Are we listening to the enemy who's telling us it's never going to change? Are we listening to God's word? And so you've got, to make, you've got to make up your mind. And as long as you and I do our part, that's all I'm asking you to do. As long as you do your part, God will do His part. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying, you know, you start speaking and that's just going to happen. You're going to get your land. If we didn't get the land, I'd made up my mind. If we didn't get the land... That's fine. God's got different land for us. He'll open another door for us. I don't want to try and twist God's arm. He knows best. But what I do want to do is I want to cooperate with God. And if God tells me to pray, to keep on praying and to speak, then that's simply what I want to do. And that's what I'm asking you to do. You can't manipulate God. But I'm telling you, you can cooperate with God. And there's a big difference. And so it may not change. Immediately, And if it doesn't change, God, that's fine. That's fine. I trust you. And I rest in your timing. That's not a problem. But I'm not going to put up with the enemy trying to bully me. And, 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 I, and I'm sitting with, with nonsense in my life where I shouldn't be. And so I'm asking you this morning, is there a mountain in your life? A mountain of lack or shortage? A mountain of addiction? Maybe a, a mountain of, of conflict? There's conflict in a relationship, and it's just been like this for a long time. Is there a mountain? You fill, you fill in the blank. What is your mountain? And so you've got to decide. Am I going to just accept it? Because I'm telling you now, that's what the enemy will tell you. Just, just, just accept it. Just, that's the way it is. Nothing is going to change for you. Or you're going to rise up <laughs> with faith and confidence and start speaking over that mountain. And let me tell you, when you do that, it's just a matter of time. God is going to come through for you. If it's not like the way you think, it, it'll be another way. But it's just a matter of time. And that is going to become your testimony. 
Just like I've been telling you about the land and what God did for us, the miracle, it's become our testimony at Maranatha. And there are many other testimonies like this. You're going to have a testimony. And you're going to be able to say to people, we battled with this, we faced this, this was an impossible situation. And then God came through for us. Come, let's stand. I want to pray for us this morning. Let's bow our heads. God, you know what my mountain is. And I want to come this morning and I want to come and repent for, for so often speaking death. And, th- and saying and thinking, it's never going to change. And I can't see how it's ever. I want to come today. And in simple childlike confidence, I want to rise up. Not, a, not, not in a cocky, arrogant attitude. Just in a humble but confident attitude. Knowing that the authority that I have. I speak over that mountain now. Just mention it to the Lord. I speak over that mountain. Blessing. Breakthrough. Whatever it needs. Favor. Release. Maybe, maybe a, a, a breaking of an addiction. That thing has no more place in my life. You will not dominate And rule my life from today on in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Bless you.